Hello and welcome back to my shop. My name is Andrew Malasi. Today we're going to be making the drawer for the nightstand, which is basically the last thing we have to do besides finish work, which I'm going to paint again. And today it's just going to be about, again, the drawer, but mostly the dovetails. What I'm doing here is I'm marking out exactly where I want the groove to go for the drawer bottom to slide into. That way I can get a really accurate measurement for the fence on the Stanley 45 here. And then also whenever I... Uh, go ahead and cut the groove it's less likely to tear out because I just don't always have the best of luck with this plane but as you'll see I do get pretty good results and I think that does have a lot to do with the fact that I really marked it out well and set it up well whenever you're doing a drawer it's really important that you remember to cut the groove for the drawer bottom first because you have to hide it later with your uh, dovetails and your half blinds that are going to be on the front of the sides of the drawer. You don't want them sticking out and I've made that mistake before it's not fun. Right here is the back of the drawer and you're going to see right here that it's a little bit larger than the width of the side plus the groove so it runs into the groove a little bit and I'm just now taking off that little bit of extra height so that when the back is on it's exactly the same size as the board minus the groove and below it because what we're going to do is have the, the drawer bottom slide in under it and from here on out you're just going to see me marking out my dovetails and just doing all that work to cut the two half line dovetails on the front side and then the two full through dovetails on the back I'm not going to do a whole lot of explaining as to how to cut a dovetail more like what I do and what I did here Again, the most important thing is that you cover up that groove that's going to show through whenever you pull the drawer out. So that you have to make sure that you make the tails of your board on the sides large enough to cover the groove on the front. And that's what I'm making sure of. This is the front here, and so I'm marking the the depth down from the or uh, in from the sides, and then the the width of the board that will be inserted into the sides there. And now I'm just going ahead and marking out the tails on my tail board, which will be the sides of the drawer. I have this little bevel gauge that I made, and what I did is I struck a line across it, and that line is my, uh, I think it's a 7 to 1 or something dovetail that I, that I enjoy the look of. I'm going to be gang cutting these dovetails for just this one drawer, and so I've got them planed and I'm just lining them up and then I'm going to use the one dovetails that I marked out now or the for the tailboard, transferring them across and then cutting both sets of tails at the same time. And then I'll do the same thing later when I do the back of the drawer for the full tails or the through tails, excuse me. And here it is, the first time I've ever used this new saw that I made from the old gent saw. It's the first time I've ever used it to cut dovetails. And I was nervous. It was a really, really smooth experience overall. I think I could sharpen it even a little bit more. I'm not sure if I did it well enough the first time around. But it saws straight, it tracks straight. I took my time, everything went perfect. And I'm not going to be ashamed to say that these are some of the best dovetails I've ever cut in my life. So I was pretty excited about the end result, as you'll see in a little bit.
At this point, I'd say if I had any criticism of this saw, it's that it's a little too light, and so I feel like I'm having to take a lot more strokes to not just try and force it through. But it works really well, like I said. As you can see, I got two really nice looking tailboards there. And the Rubo bench comes in handy again. I had never tried to chop out the waist like this before with one on top of the other and I've seen so many people do it, it just seems to be the way that everybody does it. So when I did it this time, I realized one of the major advantages of it is that you can use the board above it to help keep your chisel 90 degrees uh, perpendicular or plumb to the other board and that was quite a nice uh, advantage I hadn't even realized. I'm using this plane just to give it extra weight so it doesn't shift around and it actually worked out pretty well. This is just an old saw I had, another one that I'm not using, and I used it to do the um, curve extend trick. Moments like these make me think I really want to get a hold fast clamp, but I'm not sure. I'm kind of in between on it. And just so nobody thinks I'm being dishonest, this definitely isn't the first fitting. I just didn't feel like you needed to see all that. So I did a lot of little fidgeting and fitting, and then I got a pretty good you know, end result here. And this is what I ended up going with. And then I just planed away the what was hanging over. Now there's the other side of the drawer with the other set of half blind dovetails. Same thing here, this isn't the first test fit. I had done a little bit of work on it before, but much less on this one. This is actually the final fitting of the whole drawer right here because I already cut the through dovetails for the back, which I didn't feel like I needed to show you because it's a lot more of the same.
This is the actual first test fit of the drawer. Doesn't go in so well, no big deal, because I'm just gonna fix it and clean up wherever I have to take off some stuff and it'll be good to go. Now after having done some test fitting, you can see I've got it all planed down, everything's all flush, and the gaps seem to have disappeared, and that's because the gaps you're actually seeing were the shadows from it being proud of the surface there. And here it is, the final drawer fitting, and it just goes in really, really easily. All that's left is the bottom of the drawer, and to make sure that it sits flush against the front face there. I don't go over all that in this video I just wanted to focus on the dovetails but it's a simple matter of just gluing up a small panel. I hope you've enjoyed it that it's been useful and uh, I'll see you around for the last installment of this build series episode 8 where I put on the paint and finish it up. Thanks!